Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got three topics of discussion for you in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. Attorney John Deaton has warned Elon Musk on social media uh, cesspool Twitter that uh, his 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 comments, let's say, his public comments surrounding Dogecoin uh, may very well result in the SEC getting involved. And by the way, to be clear, uh, John Deaton is not off base here. There is definitely precedent for this. It's perfectly reasonable to make that statement, and I'll share with you exactly why, uh, putting everything into historical context. Also, and this one's kind of comical to me, uh, the SEC has rejected Jay Clayton's Bitcoin spot ETF application. Now, that's hilarious to me. Now, okay, I say Jay Clayton's. Well, technically, it's one rivers, but I call it the Jay Clayton Bitcoin spot ETF because Jay Clayton, after leaving the SEC, joined One River. And, and it's so rich to me, after all those years of Jay Clayton denying application after application after application from all of these firms in the world of crypto and blockchain requesting permission from the SEC, their blessing to have a Bitcoin spot ETF. After denying that for years, Jay Clayton leaves, and what's one of the first thing he does? Oh, he requests a spot Bitcoin ETF. I'm like, oh my God. What the hell kind of creature are you where you think that this is remotely reasonable? It's just, who are you? So um, he, he did a 180 as soon as he left the SEC. He's like, oh, no, it makes sense now. Well, this is the right one. Oh, okay, right. Well, anyway, that got the, reject, the rejection, so uh, I'll share the specifics on that. And then I also have a very quick legal update, so I think I'll start this latest Moon Nembo hot jam with that one so we can just knock it out. But before we're going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Shout out to XRP community member and attorney James K. Filan for sharing this most recent development from today, May 27th. What a lovely little Friday we're having here. And uh, he tweeted out the following, uh, the, the actual letters on your screen, but here's what uh, Mr. Filan had to say. The parties have agreed upon a fee award in connection with the Mets supplemental report and deposition, and the SEC is working with the Ripple defendants to make the required payment. The amount of the award has not been disclosed. So what's being referenced here is Dr. Albert Metz, who was hired by the SEC basically to, re, uh, to create a report that uh, is full of a bunch of lies. <laughs> That's, 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 that's how I characterize it anyway. Uh, he made bogus claims, so far as I'm concerned, about how if not for Ripple, XRP would not have gone above two cents. I kid you not. He's paid $600 an hour to create this tripe by the SEC, which means it was funded by taxpayers, of course. And so he put this report out, and uh, Ripple, they have their own experts that they hired, and they said, uh, no, your methodology is completely flawed. This report does not make any sense. And then after that... Dr. Metz, he didn't like what the Ripple expert witnesses had to say, so he came back and said, well, I've got all this extra information. I want to rebut now what the Ripple uh, experts had to say, and here's here's my report. So that was submitted to the court. That was outside of the rules of what were, was allowed by the court, yet regrettably, and I do think this is regrettable, uh, the judge allowed that report, the supplemental report, to be submitted anyway. It actually was accepted. I think that was a claim. And look, and look, I'm supportive of the judges in general. I think that was a bad call, just my humble opinion. But uh, it was accepted. Um, but part of the deal was, as a result of that being accepted, the judge said, okay, well, there are going to be additional expenses as a result of this. It wasn't anticipated. And so uh, if this is going to happen, it's going to move forward. SEC, you've got to cover the bills for Ripple. And so anyway, th that's what this letter was talking about here is, hey, okay, we've worked this out. And we've uh, we've agreed to what uh, some of those parameters might be. That's what the letter's about here. Uh, next topic. Take a look at this from XRP community member XRP JB. He tweeted out the following just this afternoon, and this is what uh, got Attorney John Deaton going. So XRP JB wrote, Elon tweets about Dogecoin, and it jumps. Ripple has a deal with just about every major financial institution. And XRP still gets suppressed because Gary Gensler is holding them hostage. Thanks for your protection, Gary. Now, that's an excellent tweet. In fact, I need to heart that. Uh, I think we can probably all in the XRP community to relate to that. And we're probably going to feel more or less the same on that point. Um, and I don't mind Elon doing anything once I'm actually... I'm a fan of Elon Musk just in general. doesn't mean I agree with him on everything, but just in a general sense. I mean, we think he's the most amazing entrepreneur ever, <laughs> just about, right? He's way up there. If he's not your number one, he's got to be in your what? Your top five, right? 
for most people, I mean, I don't know. I'm supposing you, whatever you think is fine. I'm just telling you what he's, what he's done is incredibly remarkable. And, um, it, it, and of course, as far as obviously ripple, what they've done in terms of getting XRP actually adopted and, uh, in, in like real use cases, all sorts of financial institutions on board. It's astonishing. Yet, of course, Gary Gensler's holding this back. Well, Attorney John Deaton read that himself, and he retweeted that, and, and he's, this is where he put out a little warning, warning to uh, Elon Musk. And he wrote, be careful, Elon Musk, and he did tag him right there. He said, be careful, Elon Musk, because Gary Gensler and the SEC might try and call Dogecoin an investment contract with you and your companies. And uh, honestly, that is a very serious concern. That really might actually happen. Now, I say concern doesn't mean that Elon Musk is concerned. In fact, he's not concerned. He does seem to recognize that might happen, though. Take a look at this article, and this is from last year, but from Fox Business. But uh, here's the title. Elon Musk, SEC probe over Dogecoin tweets would be awesome. So where did this stem from? Well, it looks like the SEC has been looking into this as of last year. Um, so here's a tweet from a, a news organization called First Squawk, and they tweeted out the following in February of 2021. SEC is said to investigate Tesla chief executive Musk for his tweets on Dogecoin, say sources familiar with the matter. And you know that the SEC has just been attacking Elon Musk endlessly. So in a sense, I'd kind of be surprised if they didn't come after him because they're just terrible creatures that I, I just I don't understand why they exist. At this point, I just I don't even know. I can't even I am currently not capable of evening. Swear to God damn. And then there was this. And this is actually kind of a funny tweet here, though. <laughs> and this is also said. This is the one that Elon Musk actually responded to. What's on your screen? I love this little graphic here. This comes from Pope of Muscanity. <laughs> I love memes. Memes are memes. The reason the Internet exists, right? That was the intended purpose. And it's 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 come to full maturity. It, we're here for memes, right? So Pope of Muscanity on Twitter wrote the following. The SEC investigating dog memes sent by a memer about a meme coin is peak 2021. All hail Emperor Musk. And Elon Musk did respond to that and he wrote, I hope they do. It would be awesome. And so Elon Musk, he has publicly stated in the past, and this is a quote, I do not respect the SEC, end quote. I've memorized that verbatim. I do not respect the SEC. It's pretty hard to, pretty, uh, pretty hard to memorize, right? And then he's got the little laughy emojis there. So anyway, don't know if it's going to happen. Certainly wouldn't be surprised. It'll be completely nonsensical. Uh, I'll be here to cover it if so. The SEC, that'll just further cement how worthless and terrible this organization is. That's what it will do here. Speaking of terrible, how about that uh, the little asshat Jay Clayton? There he is on your screen right there. Here's the headline from Forbes. This was from July of last year, which leads to the story today because this was denied. But uh, this is when the news was breaking, July last year. I was, I was making videos about it, and I was not happy back then. I'm eh, not happy that he did it or that you know that he was supporting this after you know denying Bitcoin ETFs for years on end. But I'm a little bit happier seeing that it didn't go through. But here's the headline from Forbes. After rejecting Bitcoin ETFs, Former SEC Chair Clayton joins fight for approval. And so, a, just to be clear, a Bitcoin ETF, which we do not have in the United States, um, an ETF, by the way, of course, stands for Exchange Traded Fund. It would be a fund that um, you could buy and sell on tr traditional exchanges like the, the you know, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, whatever it is. Uh, it would be a fund that you could pr buy and sell there. And it's representative of Bitcoin, meaning that the whoever would get approved for this, whatever organization, and assuming this happens one day, and I do think it will get approved by somebody someday, probably this summer. <clears throat> I have reasons for thinking that. Setting that aside, though, um, it, 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 it basically whatever organization ends up getting approved for it, they'd be holding actual Bitcoin, and then people would treat the ETF more or less as if it were Bitcoin, understanding that the uh, the creator of the fund approved by the SEC would be holding actual Bitcoin, right? And so you might think, well, why don't you just buy Bitcoin then? Ah, yes, well, good question. Not everybody is ready to jump into crypto and deal with learning to deal with cryptocurrency exchanges. Some people, they're more of the laggards in terms of adopting technology, and they're just like, well, I've got my little space here on, on NASDAQ, and I'm just going to buy whatever's here. And so if you open up a new um, option, 
there's a new option all of a sudden for these people that are living solely on New York Stock Exchange and, and on NASDAQ that have no exposure to crypto, perhaps. Uh, they might be like, well, if it's right there, I can just, a few clicks, I'm already on the app. I can just, bam, go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, and that would be good. And, and again, the reason this is important, though, is because it impacts supply and demand. So more people buying into these ETFs, as long as it's backed by physical, actual Bitcoin, to the extent that Bitcoin's, in quote, air quotes, physical, the better. Because there's that many more participants, even if they're not actually jumping on Coinbase or pick your exchange and buying crypto. That's a positive. And I do think stuff like this will exist for other cryptocurrencies in the future. I know we haven't even had it for Bitcoin yet, but yeah, XRP, when it's, you know, a more mature asset class, when the SEC is perhaps behaving in a less terrible manner, at least some of their perceived power has been stripped from them, which I think is inevitable, at least if justice is done. Well, in a world like that, maybe you do have a, an XRP spot ETF. Maybe that, maybe that happens, right? And so all we have right now is a Bitcoin futures ETF, which is not backed by physical Bitcoin. That is different. And so anyway, here, <laughs> covering just a, a small portion of this piece from July of last year, as SEC Chair Gary Gensler announces his rulemaking agenda, his predecessor Jay Clayton is working in some of the very sectors and investments that his commission failed to act on during his tenure. Womp womp. One River Asset Management, where Clayton serves on the board, recently submitted a registration statement for One River Carbon Neutral Bitcoin Trust. That's a mouthful. The proposed exchange traded fund seemingly checks all the boxes on popular investing trends. It is the latest attempt to get approval for an elusive Bitcoin ETF after several previous proposals were rejected during Clayton's tenure, as well as the latest in a long string of offerings selling themselves on their environmental bona fides under the ESG designation. So there you go. That's what it was in a nutshell. Jay Clayton, after denying all this for years, he decides that he's in the private sector now. He's, he joined the board of One River. He's like, my clout will probably get uh, blah, 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 Bitcoin ETF approved, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, except for it didn't work out, did it? And I wonder financially what this means for him. I am very curious as to what the benefit of him jumping on board with One River is. Not very clear. I haven't seen that, if, if at all. I, I, I don't know. Literally, I, I, if that's public information, I just haven't seen it yet. But... Um, it's just funny to see that he got squashed. Now, mind you, um, I don't get the sense that Gary Gensler, having taken over and being on the other side of the aisle, I, politically, I don't get the sense that he's particularly fond of, uh, of Jay Clayton. And so in that sense, it's not surprising, but had this gotten approved, I would have been like, oh my gosh, you know what everybody would have been thinking? It's like, like, like there is, there can be no trust in the system. Well, think about it. After him denying for years, had this gotten approved, can you imagine the outcry from, all, what about all the other Entities out there that for years have been requesting a Bitcoin ETF, just getting denied and getting denied and getting denied. And then if he were the one, he's he's he jumps on the board. Now magically it gets approved. That would just erode trust in the system. So it, it is nice to see that didn't occur, but I would like to see a Bitcoin ETF approved. I do think it's kind of silly that it hasn't occurred. But this is a story from earlier today from Cointelegraph. One River Spot Bitcoin ETF application rejected by SEC. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission maintained its perfect record for rejecting Bitcoin spot exchange traded fund applications. Friday, I love how they word that. Uh, when it disapproved a rule change to allow cryptocurrency focused hedge fund One River Digital to offer the One River Carbon Neutral Bitcoin Trust on the New York Stock Exchange ARCA. The decision comes somewhat ahead of schedule as the agency had extended the original deadline to June 2nd to allow more time for consideration. How about that? And by the way, the fun little side fact, June 2nd, that is XRP's birthday. And this year will be its 10 year birthday. Can y'all believe it? I'm gonna make a video about that when that happens. I got some interesting stuff to share. Been piling up just for that day. But that's a different topic. Anyway, I'm glad that happened. Look, I want a Bitcoin ETF approved, but if it were Jay Clayton's, I just would have been like, ah. Oh no thank you back to the drawing board i'm not a financial advisor you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that i say are right that would be a very 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 bad idea until next time to the moon mambo